Hello, I'm Dr. Gerald Chodak. Another option for treating localized prostate cancer is called brachytherapy or seed implantation. This is a rather ingenious discovery that you can put tiny radioactive pellets throughout the entire prostate gland after a patient is under anesthesia and in that way deliver a lot of radiation into the prostate without delivering a lot of radiation to the surrounding tissues. The nice thing and convenient thing about brachytherapy is that it can be done so that a patient can have it done today, go home in a couple of hours, and pretty much be back to most of their normal activities within a day or two. And that's contributed to its popularity. Another potential advantage of this treatment is that if you're going to get complications, they don't occur immediately like they do if you have surgery. With surgery, a man may get impotence or incontinence immediately after surgery and get better with time. Whereas with brachytherapy, a patient has none of those complications initially and only over time may they develop. So it has its advantages for many people in that in that way. Now, who's a good candidate for brachytherapy? Well, the ideal candidate is a man that has localized disease, whose cancer is not too aggressive, meaning that his Gleason score is under eight. There have been not so many studies of patients with high Gleason scores treated by brachytherapy alone. So a Gleason score of a six, a Gleason score of seven are the best candidates. There's a controversy about whether men should get either hormone therapy or radiation therapy combined with the seed implantation, but so far there's no good studies proving that those are in a patient's best interest. The idea behind brachytherapy is it's going to be a standalone treatment primarily for a man with localized disease. He will be followed up after his treatment periodically by having PSA levels. And you won't really know how things are going for some time because it takes at least 18 months for most of the cancer cells to be killed. So easy to do, convenient to do. The complications that can occur are similar to the other treatments. You can get impotence, problems with erections, or urinary incontinence. And one of the major concerns about this treatment is if you have urinary difficulties, such as slow stream, difficulty with urinary frequency, getting up in the nighttime, those symptoms may actually be worsened as a result of having the brachytherapy. So oftentimes we may have to treat a patient afterward if they develop some of these urinary complaints. If a man does not have those urinary complaints prior to the procedure, the likelihood of it happening after the procedure is pretty small. So for most of the patients, a good chance of getting a recovery. Now, can we say that the results are better than other treatments? Unfortunately, we can't tell you that because there have never been studies in which brachytherapy has, compared, has been compared to radiation therapy or to radical surgery or to anything else. So. Is it better or worse? No one can really say for sure. All we can tell you is it is a reasonable option for a patient who has clinically localized disease. Now, the older you are, the more suitable you might be as a candidate for this treatment. Why is that? Well, for one, we don't have 10 and 15 year follow-up on a lot of patients to know what the long-term results might be. So if you're 50 or 55 and you expect to live for 30 years, we can't tell you that 15 years into the future you won't have some problem from your prostate cancer because the brachytherapy just didn't do the job. We just don't have the information. So as long as you understand that uncertainty, you still may proceed or choose to proceed with this treatment. Now, as you get older and your life expectancy declines, well, then it becomes more and more reasonable to consider this as an option. And the question is, if you're going to have radiation instead of surgery, are you better off having brachytherapy or external radiation? 
Clearly, brachytherapy is easier and more convenient. But again, we don't have results that say that one is necessarily better. Similarly, we can't tell you for sure that the complications are truly less common. Initially, it was thought that actually this would be a better treatment with fewer complications. But it turns out as you follow patients over time at one year, two years, and three years after the treatment, the complication rates have been increasing. So that overall, it's hard to say for sure that brachytherapy truly has fewer complications than the other treatments available. And again, studies aren't so good to be able to make comparisons from one treatment to the next. Bottom line, it is a reasonable option. It's a good option the older you get and the less aggressive your cancer is. And as long as you understand the pros and cons, you should be able to consider that as an option for your disease. If you're going to have the treatment, some questions to think about include the following. Number one, how many has your doctor done themselves? Not how many have been done at that hospital, but you want to know about the doctor who's going to treat you. Number two, what are your doctor's complication rates and how were they determined? It's not really valid for a doctor at your hospital to, con to quote the results of a doctor at some other place who may have more experience and a different set of patients. You really know what you're in store for by the doctor who's going to be responsible for treating you. So those are important questions. You also want to understand whether you're a good candidate because of any urinary complaints you have. And so you want to make sure that's assessed. So bottom line, it is one more option to treat your localized disease. It has its advantages. It has its disadvantages. But there's no way to say if it's better, worse, or the same as any of the other options. You need to understand the pros and cons in order to consider it as an option for treating your disease. Thank you.